Hello and welcome to yet another episode of PhD the Philosophical Drama season 2. Friends in the last few months we've been discussing various aspects of PhD uh through various themes talking with different people who have gone through the the stories of uh, different PhDs and today we wondered if we should talk about why exactly to do a PhD and if you find the answer for that and then you need to decide when and where to do it so uh, to discuss th- these aspects of phd and to discuss a very very exciting story of phd i have my friend today joining us from the united states uh he's ankit wagre he's doing his phd at the arizona state university and the broad area of his research is chip design he's joining us at 5:30 am from the us so very much thanks for that and i'm going to add him to the live video now hello, hello. hey first of all thank you for getting up so early and joining us <laughs> um, at 5:30 am yeah I hope uh, you're you're fully awake and uh, ready to go with telling your exciting PhD story. Oh yeah, of course. So I'm, I'm going to probably not dive into your story uh, at the first uh, instant. I'm going to ask you about the background. Uh, okay. What is your background? I mean, what have you done before joining PhD? okay uh so my background has mostly been in electronics communication and chip design um mm-hmm. mostly uh so my field is called vlsi very large scale integration which means uh, all the uh, you know mobile chips computer chips all that how you go into the absolute nanometer and uh, you know design these circuits that's what i work on right. you know so yeah yeah so um um you you you've done your btech and then you've done your uh, masters and then you decided to do a phd so before i go uh, that you decided to do a phd uh, okay if you can talk about how how you had the time during your masters or even bachelors okay uh so to start with uh, this thing uh, you're asking about how uh, how i got to uh, how i made time for phd you mean like uh, yeah i mean or, what was your what was the process of uh, doing getting into the uh, uh, phd is what i'm trying right. to get to okay so you have to be technically very strong okay before you can uh, join a phd you have to be passionate so from bachelors right since bachelors now uh, uh, you had to focus on you know uh, go you have to basically go beyond what was given in the book you have to go beyond what was uh, uh you know uh pursued by most people um this continues into masters as well uh if you generally most people what they do is that they go and they start uh, tracking jobs you know they go specifically after job requirements but no that's not what you should be doing you should be focusing more on uh, figuring out what's needed for expanding the knowledge right um and that's so, exactly how, what i did how did you figure it out i mean what was the time when you were doing your masters that you why did you decide to do a phd let's go with the first w okay so you have to be passionate about your subject first of all and you have to want to excel in that field okay uh if you if you think of it in terms of uh, uh, this thing how technically uh, you know what you want to achieve see phd or uh, if you see what is done in us most of the times you'll see that many people have inventions many people go for startups you know to pursue something that far you have to either be in a phd or you have to be in a startup because if you mm-hmm. join a company most of the times what will happen is that uh, you will end up doing repetitive work uh, you know for a very long time and that's not what you how you want to start off your uh, journey you want to see what all domains are there uh see which domain you want to excel in explore new things cutting edge and sometimes even bleeding edge technologies and that that the thing that drives you right you have to know that and then you know you have to be in touch with the latest stuff which is happening 
Right. That's how right. that's how you know you first build the passion and then go for a PhD and see what you can do to achieve that excellence. Right, right. And in in your case, how how did it work out? Okay, uh, worked out pretty fine actually. Uh, how uh, how I pursued how, it? How did you how did you land up in Arizona State University for your PhD? Right. So generally, what you do is that you start looking at all the work that is being done in your field. uh particularly uh, you know you see what fields interest you there are so many different fields that you could be interested in then you have to look for professors uh, who are working in that field uh, you know the to- the top ones you prefer pre- you want to preferably go for the top ones uh you start reading their research papers so i spent around a year reading over a thousand papers uh, uh just to find out which field interests me and what is being done over there then once you figured that out uh you have to start contacting those professors and show your interest in that field right uh you have to specifically uh, talk about wh- how you can contribute better in that specific field and why you think you should be a phd candidate under them if you right. can convince them um then you know it it makes sense for you know you to join a phd under them uh you will be put in a s- specific track under them uh, generally it's the professors who decide which track you're in uh because they have like multiple projects going on um, and, and it all, of course it also also depends on the funding which is being uh, given to specific projects so right. if your right. interests align with the uh, project that are running under that professor then of course you know you'll be hired right right but uh, most people that we know or we uh, have acquaintances with is from engineering background they don't really go for a phd you were a engineer uh, you did your masters and then you decided to do a phd uh, was was it a specific uh, reason that you had to do a phd or i mean you mentioned about passion and everything but what was what was that kick that you had from inside to to you know explore the field much deeper okay uh, so what i learned staying in my industry i actually worked in industry before uh, joining phd and what i understood is that uh, depending on which uh, first of all which country you are in and which uh, projects you are on your exposure and the quality of work matters matters and changes quite a bit Uh, if you if you look at uh, several research labs, uh, there, there are some research labs even in the industry, and they generally end up doing the most bleeding edge work. But to even get into those uh, labs, you know, uh, you need to have a PhD. It's it's the, it's a must. You, any extra education above it is okay. It's always welcome, but PhD is a okay. must because uh, you have to have a systematic thought process. You have to have a systematic uh, you know way of approaching a certain. thing you have to know how to pick out uh, you know stuff from papers and you know you have to have that habit basically and uh, i noticed that even when i was in india i was noticing all of the stuff and uh, i figured okay i need to and you have to go for phd because uh, that's the only way i could get you know a better quality of work and that that passion you know drove me uh, in india most of the times what happens is that uh, so coming from engineering background uh, most of the times in india what happens is that uh, people think uh, they at least they have this notion that if you do a phd that means you will definitely end up in academia there's no other uh, job for you but uh, that's generally not the case uh, if you if you do a phd in uh, you know other countries like us uh, specifically or even you know uk uh, what happens is that uh, you will uh you will end up being exposed not only to academy of course that that f- angle is always there but through conferences you'll also get to meet uh, you know top people in the industry i've met ceos from multiple companies uh, during my phd so this exposure you can't get anywhere else i mean that right. it, it's you know it's amazing yeah yeah interesting to know uh i know an interesting thing that you chose to do while you were applying for phd positions okay doing some some interesting coding and using it for your applications uh do you want to share oh, that right. yeah okay so okay um here's what happened so i knew that i had to apply 
uh, you know, to so many different professors, right? Uh, I knew their research interests. I knew what to speak, uh, say to them. But right. uh, writing the mails was a huge pain. Okay, honestly, like really, yeah. like <laughs> I was, I was targeting like one sixty eight professors at the time, and uh, I, my time was completely swamped with you know reading papers, you know collecting the information. So you know, what I did was I actually ended up writing a code to you know, uh, well actually had an Excel sheet and then a code in Excel to generate my letters for me. and then i would proofread nice. them i would uh, you know slightly modify them and send it off nice, so nice. yeah so if if you have that skill you can use it for such a such a thing as well <laughs> you can use it for your applications as well yeah right mm. and then why did you uh, let's let's go from why to do a phd to where to do a phd uh why did you choose to be in uh, us firstly and why did you choose arizona state university specifically okay um so let's let's start with why us to begin with uh well my field specifically vlsi is mostly based in us i mean mm -hmm. uh, india is still growing in that field uh, i mean there's a very good base in bangalore but uh, in us it's obviously the best most of the projects first get generated in us and then are rippled down to india so uh i figured you know okay i want to be at the source of the projects where you know the where people are actually you know building uh building ideas and building you know deciding what to do before actually doing it the most competition which is there is in silicon valley uh of course you know california and mm -hmm. uh, are, uh so there is that factor that silicon valley is there in us but uh you get exposure to certain other stuff as well for example fabrication now fabrication companies uh, are very hard to find and fabrication basically means that you get to create your chip like you get a chip in hand and those are generally not available in india there are very few uh, research labs who have them and that too the technology is generally outdated it's like very old technology so, so did you did you actually look at all of these things when you were choosing to come to us like you went through these things in great detail before your applications of course of course uh, so i had to because uh, depending on that the choice of college the choice of professor completely changes i even right. even when applying under a professor i went through their students profiles and looked at uh, uh, you know the type of papers which they were uh, uh, making you know and then uh, uh, i was trying to see how their career ended out um, you know mm -hmm. so the all these all this detail right this microscopic detail had to be done before joining phd because uh, you know um, you have to be like very careful you are going to spend like 5 to 6 years of your life doing phd you don't want to like you know be in a wrong field i mean mm -hmm. uh, you will hate yourself if you do that uh, you know uh, mm -hmm. so generally what you want to do is that you want to be sure that you, you you know you want to do it in that field and nothing else that's a huge time you know and uh, if you're in the wrong field you will uh, you know sometimes i've seen uh, this happen to people either they quit phd or they you know uh, they're you know very depressed in their phd and you don't want to spend like you know that kind of time being depressed or you know quitting phd uh, it's a lot of effort to be honest and uh, you want to be passionate about it and you want to know that that's the best you could have done Right. Uh, for that field, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, how was it being in in the right field? Because you you've done a lot of background homework to choose your right lab, and then you land there. So, how was the experience? Right. Um, the experience was quite amazing, actually. So, uh, what happened was that I wanted a specific project under this particular professor, and I actually requested for it even before joining, and I actually ended up getting it. uh wow. it was uh, uh so my project mostly deals with uh, uh you know uh, neurons and creating circuits using neurons uh we build uh, uh you know for for building a chip generally uh, you know most labs what they do is that there are several several steps for example step 1 step 2 to step 10 and most mm -hmm. of the people only get to work on something like say step 5 or step 6 but not the entire flow but uh, being in this specific lab i knew that uh, i'll get to work on the entire you know flow step 1 through step 10 and not just on you know specific parts of it so mm -hmm. that way you know the exposure and the learning process uh is very good when you join you know when you choose a lab which gives you the best advantage for what you're looking for 
right right but but i'm sure um, although you did a lot of background homework you you know you got the project that you wanted uh, there must be a time when you felt that something is not working and you felt okay there's some oh, some issue i need to fix obviously and, yeah so, so how did you how did you go through that part that phase okay um so even before i speak about that i was actually uh, i was actually mentally prepared by my seniors uh they actually told me that you know there will be a time in your phd where uh, you won't see the light at the end of the tunnel you know okay. you will you will get stuck there will be a time you know you'll be like oh my life is not going anywhere you know there is you'll be like totally depressed and uh, they told me just stay on the course you will see the light at the end of the tunnel just stay on the course and don't uh, you know uh, divert from that course it yeah. happened to me uh i was working on this one idea uh and that idea was just not working out you know i spent like around over 6 months just specifically trying to figure out what to do with that idea and mm-hmm. uh, of course that idea failed uh but uh, you know because i was working rigorously on that idea something new came out of it you know and that thing uh, ended up being a paper and a patent so uh mm-hmm. that was you know quite amazing but it took me one year to you know come up with that and of course there was no light at the end of the tunnel you know till almost 8 months or so and then suddenly once you get it you know then everything becomes clear so right right yeah but you have to be aggressive like you have to have multiple threads in parallel uh, you should prefer that because if you don't do that then what happens is that if there is no light at the end of one thread uh, you know you can still see light at the end of the other thread and you know that kind of helps you uh, uh you know keep you know the light going on and the phd yeah 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 and um because you were you were so passionately involved in your project uh mm-hmm. even then there is a, there is a chance that you might get bored about with it right you can you can't basically work 24/7 on one particular thing and i know right. you are you are a fan of origami and you like playing chess yeah so uh talk talk us through that part how you explore okay. this, this part okay uh, really so yeah uh well you have to have your hobbies uh, you can't be doing just phd or just uh, this thing you know you will get bored of course uh, there will be times when a specific project uh, won't really match your interest or you know you may just get fed up of it because something is not working mm-hmm. right um you have to make sure that you get to channel out your uh, angular anger of frustration you know sometimes at the project in something which is creative now uh, you know i i i know some people who play shooting games you know shoot a bunch of people you know and then they're like suddenly happy uh, you will uh, i generally end up doing origami um i would end up making you know well origami and paper craft one of the two uh, that's how i uh, you know channel of my creativity so what generally what happens is that sometimes you are just working on something and you get a mind block okay now on that mm-hmm. day you probably won't be able to solve whatever problem you're trying to uh, solve and uh, what you should do and especially on those days is just get up go home go for a walk you know uh, maybe have something nice for dinner uh, you know go sleep restart again fresh in the morning and i i think that's what's important several times you know because right. if you can't uh, step back and start you know th- thinking fresh again then you know it it, it won't help you otherwise you know? right right but how, how does it really uh, work well with the schedule that you generally have because personally i know that you have a very 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 hectic schedule you uh, <laughs> okay. probably sometimes you sleep 4 hours a day or something Right, so, right. Uh, not how, sometimes, how uh, most of the times, actually. Um, okay, most of the times I'm generally on four to six hour schedule, uh, sleep schedule. Uh, sometimes it used to happen that I actually I'm actually calculating how much time it takes for me to travel from my house to college, and some I would you know, ping my professor, hey, uh, you know, I need some I need some extra time, you know, that travel time I can cut down. And I was I used to do all that budgeting, you know. Uh, just to just to get the work done on time so okay. the schedule has to be maintained very uh, uh you know strictly uh 
I know uh, several people, you know, uh, you know, PhD is a long time, right? You have five years or six years, right? And then what happens in the middle is that sometimes, you know, you just start losing track of time because you're thinking, okay, mm -hmm. you know what? Uh, I missed a deadline. I still have, you know, four more years to go. I mean, okay, you have four more years to go, but if you didn't finish, you know, one paper in one year, you know, the, those four more years are going to go through fast very quickly. So mm -hmm. you have to have a very tight schedule. Uh, Generally, uh, PhDs, uh, uh, you know, if you're doing it right, your schedule will be very, very, very tight, and that will be the hardest you'll probably ever work in your life. So, yeah. yeah. But but then coming back to the question, how how do you manage life with a four to six hour sleep schedule? I mean, what do you I do with that? To, yeah. Okay. So you have to take out time for everything. Of course, there are some compromises because there are there is stuff which will always be you know on higher priority than other stuff. Um, specifically, what you need to do is that you need to uh, uh, you know decide okay, in a particular day, this is this is the these are the set of tasks which I'm going to do and nothing else, you know, and then do those tasks properly after that because if you start switching between tasks, okay, I want to do this, but I also want to do this. You won't do anything properly, and then that ends up. wasting more time you know and you will never finish uh, uh, you know doing your, the stuff which you wanted to do of course you mm -hmm. will always have to prioritize uh, what you need to do for example there will be a hundred things which you can do sure but what is it that you need the most uh, several times what happens is that you need to be looking at deadlines and you are thinking okay greedy approach you know the first deadline you know is going to be the first thing which i'm going to solve sure you know but then uh, uh you have to make sure that other things are also accommodated because there are some things which don't have a deadline and then you know they could just get getting keep getting pushed forward so right. you know you have to f basically set the timeline figure out what you need to do in a day and then do it i think that's mm -hmm. the advice i would give to people right right uh so you have been one of those several graduate students uh, whose graduate life was struck with covid yeah and uh, but you are one of those slightly luckier ones who luckier. could work <laughs> because <laughs> people have struggled who have uh, who have uh, wet labs they have struggled to go back to the lab and work because institutes have been shut down or there is a uh, limited access that is allowed into the lab right uh, so did you feel uh, like privileged at that time or was it more pressure working because now you are like you are working from home and you can basically work all the time um okay um so here's the thing uh, when you have when you have a work from home i ideally you would expect you know that uh, okay you know you can uh, work in your pajamas or something you know uh, ha have fun but uh, that's not what happens what happens is that now everybody is working from home and yeah. they're going to schedule meetings now all day long because you know everybody has the time to do so uh, nobody is traveling nobody has anything else to do at home uh, especially at the, at the beginning of covid period uh, you know um, nobody had planned what to do so all they had was their work you know yeah especially because it's work from home uh well if you have to go to the lab uh, you kind of you know have a have an excuse once you come to the lab hey i don't have any access you know so there that's that's when you can start getting your free time but if you are working from home and if you have that kind of uh, uh, this thing uh you know facility uh you have to work even harder than what you have been working pre covid you know right right yeah but at the end of the day of course you know it kind of no uh, you know was fun because it was just different experience altogether because uh, you know you can uh, if, you, if when you go to the lab uh, you know uh, you don't have control over the environment what kind of environment sometimes you know people will uh, you know disturb your bug you but at home you can customize uh, you know your entire desk and everything and you know uh, yeah basically basically make the environment suit you uh, right yeah, right to have maximum productivity right right interesting uh now let's go to the level where you're looking uh, at at finishing your phd and again the the w questions come up that what to do next okay and what have i achieved in the last 5 6 years and how do do you think about it because you you are someone who likes to have a very nice background homework done about what to do next and how how to go about it 
right so you think about uh, those things uh, in the last few years of your phd or or you think there's still time i can i can probably take more time to decide it oh well um uh you know uh, you tend to think you will have time in your last year but generally that does not happen trust me that does not happen um there is like so much on your plate um, especially in us you know you're not not only thinking about uh, just getting a job or you know getting but also about uh, you know hey what, what happened to my visa hey suddenly you know all the seniors will be like hey what's up with the green card you know and then there is, there are a lot of other uh, you know uh, extra things which you need to start looking into you know which you weren't planning to look at to begin with yeah. you also have to write your dissertation um uh uh you know you have to finish a few targets which a professor has set for you for graduation or uh, you have to prepare for jobs um mm. there is a lot of stuff going on you know a lot of balls in the air uh, which are trying to juggle uh the planning has to be done before the last year if you want to do planning properly um uh, i already have a plan um i'm planning to go for um, an industry job i'm specifically targeting uh, certain groups in the industry where i'll be applying mm-hmm. now uh, i'm already in talks with hr for that uh right. um i'm also uh, uh you know trying to see what other things i can do other than just uh, uh you know uh, just getting a job uh, maybe there's a hope for startup you know uh, maybe i can uh, start looking at other uh, research angles which i haven't explored yet because even after you graduate from phd generally what happens is that you're still in touch with the group and then uh, you can actually kind of, because you've spent the last 5 to 6 years doing your phd you are the be- one of the best people who can mentor the new students uh, yeah. when you know they are doing their phd so uh, i know of several seniors even from my lab who have uh, uh, you know continue to work Uh, towards the progress of the lab you know even 3 to 4 years after their graduation so mm-hmm. uh you know there are a lot of things that you could do uh you have just have to see you know how you are going to fit all the it together that's uh, you know right right yeah a, a very very uh, different approach that you have uh, about dealing with uh plans in the future even when you are really stressed and you have a hectic schedule so that that's very interesting to know had you not done a phd do you see yourself somewhat different or do you, i mean comparing with the ankit who joined for a phd and now the ankit that is almost on the verge of finishing the phd how, how uh, do you see yeah. um see uh, from the perspective of having a systematic work schedule and uh, just having a you know more mature approach towards the stuff and uh, of course one extra major thing which is presentation okay mm-hmm. uh, these things improve quite a lot when you're doing a phd right. plus you get in the habit of tracking uh, uh, you know work which is happening around the world uh, generally when you're in masters uh, uh, you know well most people not all people but most people generally never end up reading research papers you mm-hmm. think you're reading it you may end up reading like 5 6 maybe 10 research papers and you won't even grasp the whole thing because uh, you're not used to certain stuff for example uh, you know mathematical formulation of certain problem or maybe you know uh, just the structure in which uh, you present stuff to the audience you know phd is not only just work it's also half you know half of half of it is like being an author you come to know how to write stuff you know and that's one of the biggest challenges which you will be facing and i think i have learned quite a bit uh, you know from my advisor on that specific part you know just to write and present because think of it like this you're writing a paragraph you know everything about your paragraph right so you're then you know, placing points point number 1 2 3 you know even if they get shuffled you know exactly you know which point means what so you know uh, yeah. that that kind of uh, you know makes you the reader and the uh, you know writer but if somebody else is reading it he sees you know point number 2 then 1 then 3 he gets jumbled up and he doesn't understand it you know you can't have that because you now you're writing so you have to pay attention to writing and that is a very very big thing which i learned it took me the longest time to learn that and i'm still learning mm-hmm. to be honest uh you know so half work so being systematic and all that stuff and half of it it is you know just being an author and trying to present your work in the best possible way 
I think right. uh, the Ankit who joined at the beginning of PhD had no clue about all of this stuff, especially the author part. Honestly, you know, my professor, you know, he once asked me, "Hey, what do you think about, uh, uh, you know, what what did you think PhD was?" And I said, uh, "Innovation." He said, "No, it's innovation plus authorship. You know, it's writing, and writing is one of the hardest uh, things which you can do." Great, great, very very interesting uh, views that you have about a PhD and. Uh, again going back to the coding um, experiment that you did while applying for phd uh, <laughs> okay. to uh, making small robots which we've not really talked about in this interview but uh, okay. I, i know how, how you uh, do that and um, i hope uh, very soon you can graduate uh, and do go to the next part of your wonderful journey yeah uh, thank you once again for joining us today and sharing your uh, phd story with us hey thank you so much for the opportunity to be honest or uh, you know to reach out people i, I think uh, this is a very good initiative in my opinion uh, you know uh, that you have taken it basically helps all the people who are planning to apply for phd i, I mean when i was doing it it was uh, one of the hardest things you know to just gather information so i think uh, this is a good podium where you know uh, we can share our experiences and then that helps the new people who are coming in for phd right right thank That's you so really much wonderful. and i'll see you soon all right see you yeah bye 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 yeah that was kitwagle's phd story and um, we are coming to an end of season 2 very soon so uh, don't miss the next few stories and do give us feedback about how you found out uh, this uh, new season and um, give us suggestions so that we can come back soon with a brand new season till then take good care of yourself and your friends and relatives and stay safe